Eduardo, so continuing our theme of this quarter's wine club about winemaking techniques or other you know, vineyard impacts on wine, uh, we have the 2017 vintage of Martin Ray Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, so this is from Santa Cruz, uh -huh. and we chose it because it's showing high elevation. So this is um, grown at 2,200 feet elevation. Wow. Yeah, not a lot of places in, in California can say that. No, that. no. And it's, you know, it's it's sort of um, in terms of the vineyard, you can have different impacts in terms of, you know, are you getting more sort of morning light? You know, sometimes it's it's a um, usually less risk of, of frost because uh -huh. frost will, you know, it's heavier than than air. So it will, it will funnel down um, the hillside. So they often don't have quite as much risk of that. But um, but then it can just be, you know, have other considerations. Um, the berries can sort of develop sort of a, a, a different tannin structure uh -huh. because of their, they're closer, and... right? Closer to the sun. Totally. Exactly, which can which can show itself in the wine. Totally, and talk about the ultimate uh, red varietal for winemakers to, to have fun with and then enhance it in a lot of ways. Absolutely. Cabernet Sauvignon, it's definitely often gifted, if not most of the times, with that oak regimen, with the pump overs, with a little more oomph to it right. rather than what it would do by itself. Exactly, exactly. And, um, you know, this producer is, is pretty interesting too. I think, you know, in terms of Santa Cruz, kind of put that region on the map. You know, I think a lot of people think of Ridge um, when, when thinking of Santa Cruz, but, you know, they were actually there first. Wow. Yeah, talk about a piece of history there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has a lot of concentration. Uh, it's got some depth, uh, beautiful violets, uh, yeah. a little bit of purple even in the glass for a, a touch. But but like a beautiful sort of freshness as well, right? Uh -huh. You know, from, for Cabernet Sauvignon, which is, you know, sort of a, a, a muscular variety. Totally. Just like your sumo wrestler, yeah. USC fighter kind of thing. But this one, it has this like sort of lithe quality. Like it's just very sort of like long string tannins. I think it's really beautiful. Absolutely. It's kind of like a sumo wrestler ice skate in some ways pretty gently moving through the, the just, whole rink just like that that's exactly what i was thinking wow pairing wise what do you think <laughs> well i think you know what's what's sort of interesting about cabernet is is people so often pigeonhole it into thinking oh it has to go with steak exactly but i think you know the tannins on this are, are actually like sort of plush and pliable and i think it could definitely work with the steak but i think like any kind of like braised meat, but um, but like lamb even. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, like putting it in the crock pot overnight, a little bit of a leg of lamb and just yeah. let it roast slowly with vegetables. Yeah. Or the other one I was thinking, uh, I did this the other day with, uh, with a cap similar, is grabbing a chicken, chicken thighs, and then you put a little bit of like uh, apricot marmalade overnight Ooh. with a little spice to it and pepper and cayenne, yeah. let it marinate and then just grill it and get that extra coat outside of I like need extra that char. recipe that sounds oh delicious my God. <laughs> we should definitely do that <laughs> definitely but great great wine santa cruz mountains doesn't often get the credit it doesn't and i think you can also often find sort of under the radar and more value driven wines there especially cabernet sauvignon yeah well here's an, a great option for cabernet cheers, cheers. guys